All right, today we're going to take a look at six different VSTi drummers. And I've lined them up here in my DAW, which is Mixcraft, and given them each the same drum pattern to play for us. So we're going to start with BFD3, and I'm going to bring that interface up. I'm going to go through a few points here. Uh, first of all, the way the plugin looks. Um, this one, I don't use it a lot, so to me it may look a little complex, but that may not be the case for other people. So, I'm going to say, yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, the mixer has lots of control going on here. Uh, looks like you have a, uh, it's already set up for each drum having its own channel in the onboard mixer. Um, these are presets, apparently. We've got kits. All these different kits that it comes with, and I do know that BFD comes with, you can check out demo packs by clicking this and it'll go to their website uh, in this little window and you can download any of these packs um, and check them out. Looks like there's quite a few here. So yeah, lots of different drum kits, drum packs to check out in BFD. And let's hear what it sounds like. Okay. All right, I ended up loading this back to the 70s preset. It loads a kit that's on my hard drive. I don't have a lot of these. Even though they're listed here, there's pieces of the drums missing when I double click them. So we're gonna use these presets and let's find, I know this is like a Led Zeppelin tone, cashmere. So we'll double click that and it comes up and you can see down here that it's loading each of these samples. You can see this one loading up. Okay, let's play that and see what it sounds like. Try a different one here. Now right, we've got full on heavy rock. Let's play that. And that's more of the tone I was looking for. So, yeah, BFD sounds pretty good, pretty realistic. Um, as far as the uh, mixer goes, um, I guess you can send it out to multiple output tracks, which would be right here in your DAW or whatever you're using. And um, if that's the case, you could have the kick here, the snare here, hi-hat, rack tom, floor tom, etc. And then mix them all separately with your own effects and everything. And that's how I do it. Um, I don't rely on the default mixing going on in the plugin itself. I like to do it myself. So um, samples per instrument is something that I want to go over in each one of these plugins and what that is is let's say you've got your snare drum and what if you set it up where you're hitting it uh, softer and even softer than that and there must be multiple samples of each instrument to pull off the human sound so let's bring up our editor here in the DAW close the plug-in itself. For example, this is the hi-hat. So to get that human feel type of sound, let me see if I can solo the hi-hat in this plug-in. Where's the hi-hat? There it is. Solo? Does that work? So what you've got is uh, one and two and three and four and so the ands need to be a much lighter hit. And if the the plugin that you're using only has a couple of samples per instrument, you're going to get a very rigid sound. You're not going to get a human feel. So I know that this one is pretty elaborate. Pull that down just a little bit. It's quieter. 
And not only does it get quieter, but it loses the attack as if the drummer's stick is hitting the hi-hat with less force. And that's what you want. So BFD does pretty good in that arena. Now as far as the overall ease of use, um, to me, this one's a little more difficult to use. I like to see a drum kit in front of me, but it does have some things that are very useful. These drums, like you can switch in and out drums and create your own kit very easily with this uh, with this plugin. Grooves, it's got all kinds of grooves it comes with. Apparently they're not using the hi-hat, right? So you can build your own grooves and uh, stuff right in the the plugin itself. And it comes with all kinds of effects here. What have we got? We got an EQ. We've got a something else. It looks like a dry. Oh, there's all kinds of them here. Compressors, distortion, limiter, noise gate, EQs, filters, delays, reverbs, flange. Okay, there's lots of effects in this one. Um, myself, again, I don't use the effects and stuff that are on the plugin itself. I like to do that in my DAW and add the effects plugins that I'm used to using on everything else. But they're here if you want them. And here's their groove editor. And this, you've got your add notes, erase notes. Um, I don't know what a paintbrush would do. There you go. Like Hi-hat beats, I guess. But pretty straightforward. It's like a piano roll, I guess. And this is cool. The key map shows you exactly what key. Let's say you were using something like this or your uh, MIDI controller that you've got. This tells you exactly what key will do what as far as this plugin is concerned. Okay, let's move on to Addictive Drums 2. And we'll bring that up. Hit play, see what it sounds like. And again, with this plugin, you are adding and removing and altering each piece of the kit. And I imagine there are kits. Yeah, right here. A bunch of different kits that you can use. And then you can alter each one here. And it shows the mixer here by default. And you've got your solo and your mute. And there's all your tone designer volume envelope. Tape and shape. There's an equalizer, compression, noise gate, which instrument you're working with. Okay. And as you can tell, I'm learning this one as we go. Um, I've used it a few times for testing, but it's not my regular. So I am checking stuff out here right along with you. Uh, we've got more effects. That is a delay, I believe. And we've got, I guess it says, that's also a delay. Probably a reverb. And can this do multi-outs? Apparently it can, because there are a bunch of multi-outs under it. And it's already set up that way, it appears. Well, it's not, because they're all coming out the master. Okay, so they've got a little button down here where you can choose separate out. And that is strange wording to me to find uh, where you're sending your, your output. It basically doesn't give you a choice to where to send it. You are just sending it to the second multi-out track. Which I guess that's fine. And you can see... That's fine, but in the the other plugins that I use, you can choose where you're sending it. And let's just put that right back in the master. Uh, as far as the way this looks, it's very nice looking. Uh, kind of a gold or platinum looking finish. And they've got a 
what they call beats, and that's what's called grooved and grooves in other plugins. Beats Gallery, we've got a short list, I guess maybe that's your favorites. Transform, a lot of uh, tweaking you can do, apparently. So it looks for Addictive Drums 2 here, that's about it, other than this says Explore, so I guess we can... Does this play if we hit it? Well, we can... This. Right. An easy way... An easy way to preview the kits. Okay, so that's pretty neat. An easy way for you to preview the kits. And what does that say that does? Gallery. Different drum kits, different grooves, I suppose, or... Okay, that's pretty cool. I like that. Maybe I'll have to use this plugin more often than I do. All right, let's close that. And next up, we're going to go with the very well known Easy Drummer from ToonTrack. And as you can see right off the bat, it looks awesome. This drum kit is very impressive. Let's hear what it sounds like. Um, yeah, that looks cool. And I have used this one quite a bit. I know that you can click here and change drum kits, all kinds of different versions of these drum kits, and uh, I guess the way they're mic'd up or mixed or, or whatever. Um, but I don't know how many of them actually come with Easy Drummer when you buy it. I know a lot of these are expansion packs that you can buy. Um, their mixer. An easy drummer is pretty basic. You've got your solo and your mute, but you can choose any of the outputs. If you remember, we were talking about that with Addictive Drums 2. Uh, they don't allow you to do that. They allow just to send it out to the pre-selected output. So here you can choose any of them. Then you've got your reverb and compression. Uh, pitch, I guess. Pitch adjustment on some cymbals and drum heads. And mic bleed adjustments which is very cool uh, as far as how much bleed is in each one of the microphones on the drum kit and browser is going to be their grooves or beats so not only can you preview these by just going through the different uh, signatures you want etc and double clicking but you can drag them down here go get a different one drag it down there and basically build an entire song or you can also drag those out into your DAW which is the way I would do it if I was to use the presets the grooves search we've got oh boy which kit we're searching, which genre, which type, straight or swing, shuffle, hi-hat open, and that leaves you with these grooves. So I guess if you want to get very specific, you can also do this tap to find, which is kind of cool. And it'll find the grooves in the BPM that you're specifying. So that's kind of it as far as Easy Drummer goes. It's the basic... Uh, drum synth that they that ToonTrack has put out there. Their bigger one is uh, Superior Drummer, which is going to be our last review here. This is called Studio Drummer, and it runs in Contact Player. This looks great. It doesn't look quite as good as Easy Drummer. And if you click the uh, kit pieces, they don't play unless you specify, and that's in the options. Let me find that. 
yeah, it's kind of hidden here. If you go down to Options, Trigger on Mouse Click. And then you've got your... So let's hear what that sounds like. I really like the way that one sounds. To me, it sounds like a more refined live kit, like they've spent more time uh, recording those samples. There's all kinds of options. You've got, uh, you select your instrument here or just click on it and that's what shows up. And you've got your overhead mix, how much of that uh, uh, drum is going to end up in the overhead mic and the room mic. You can tune it. It's a very nice sounding tom right there. Uh, attack, hold, and decay, I'm going to guess that is going to take away my click. Yep. I don't know what that's doing. Decay. Aha. Uh -huh. It's like a noise gate. It's cutting off the natural ring of the drum. There we go. That sounds good. And also, you've got a mixer here. And as you can see, as we click each instrument, it shows up down here. We've got an equalizer with your lows, your low, mid, high, mid, and highs. Look, we've got settings. Inside mic, outside mic. Boy, you've got some control in this plugin for sure. Top mic, bottom mic, bleed. <laughs> and here's where you set the multi-output, I suppose. Now, well, I don't quite have that down yet, but... Looks like a nice compressor, solid bus compressor. There we go, that's nice. Tape sound, make it sound uh, like it was recorded analog. Mm -hmm. You got some effects presets. There's some grooves as well. It doesn't look like it's as full of grooves as Easy Drummer was, but there's quite a few. Okay, so overall, this one so far my favorite as far as how it sounds. Okay, so we'll keep that in mind and move along. And this is called MT Power Drum Kit. And I think it's Power Drum Kit 2. It's just not showing up there as that. Yeah, here we go. Let's hear what this one sounds like. Now the thing about this one that makes it attractive is not only that you've got your kit here that looks nice, but this is free. This is a free plugin, and it's a great alternative to any of these others, um, except it's not quite as comprehensive. This is the only kit you've got. You can't trade out pieces. Um, it does have a mixer, and you can select where it outputs to each, each instrument. Um, one thing I do not like about this mixer that I have found here is I not sure how you how to solo anything. These are all enabled, so if I do that, there'll be no snare. So apparently I have to uncheck all those except for snare if I want to solo it. I could be wrong. Looks like we've got a compressor there and a how much knob. Sounds more like a reverb than compression to me, but. And we've got some grooves. And I'm not sure how to make it stop doing that. There we go. 
Uh, three bar, four bar, five bar. That's pretty neat there. They have a lot of uh, a lot of grooves in here for just this one drum kit. Like your velocities. Okay, that to me just sounds like it's getting quieter or louder. That's something that I do remember from this particular plug-in is I don't think it's got a lot of samples per yeah it's still got the still got the uh, the attack there the click from the stick so they're basically just turning it down as far as I can tell there's not a bunch of samples per per each drum or hi-hat um, they're just basically turning it up and down, but still for free, this is an awesome plug-in for free. All right, let's move on to our last entry here. This is Superior Drummer 3, recently released by Toontrack, and this is kind of my go-to because it's more comprehensive than Easy Drummer is, and it sounds really good the way I mix it anyway. I, I send everything out to multiple outs and I mix it myself with my own plugins and everything. So, to me, I can get it sounding great. Um, obviously, when you first look at it, it looks great. This is the name of the kit, Music City USA. You can change kits. There's all these different things. And it this metal foundry is very impressive to a lot of uh, rock and roll and metal guys. <clears throat> and as you can see it's missing symbols and things, but all you have to do is right click and choose something. So now you've got symbols and toms. And you've got lots of options here with uh, Superior Drummer as well. Not only with kits, and those are all the Easy Drummer kits that it also loads, which is great. You can use the two products interactively here. So basically, if you have Superior Drummer, you never have to run Easy Drummer to use the kits. You can use them in here. Um, let's go back to the simple uh, Music City USA kit. And go over and check out their grooves. Basically the same as Easy Drummer. There's tons and tons of grooves. Tap to find them. Pretty much the same thing. The Mixer. I like the mixer. You can choose basically any output you want. For example, the way I do it, I've got the kick mics in one, and let's go with the snare drum, the top and the bottom in, I think they call it three-fourths because it's stereo. But as you can see when I play it now, the snare drum comes out here. And then I go in and name them. And add my effects. Um, I'll do that all the way across. But this is pretty cool. You've got your soloing and your muting. And invert your phase. Phase inversion right there with a single click. I love that. And up here, I believe this is the bleed. Adjust the overall volume of instruments that bleed into this microphone. That's awesome. Because if you're getting, let's say, a snare coming through your hi-hat and you don't want that, then you would just do that. So it's a pretty useful mixer that they've provided here. Tracker. I messed with this a little bit. It says drop audio to get MIDI. So that tells me that it's converting audio files into data, MIDI data, which is something that not many software companies have come out with it's not it's not easy to do because audio is not data and data is not audio but I did drag and drop a uh, kick drum in here and it did work it selected a kick drum to represent it so yay for tune track I suppose so out of all those I think I like the uh, sound of Studio Drummer the best for my type of music anyway. I do uh, 
arena rock, theatrical stuff like Dream Theater or uh, Trans-Siberian Orchestra, that kind of thing. And this sounds the best for me. Um, this one, for ease of use, Superior Drummer 3, for ease of use and versatility, and will probably work best for most of you out there doing rock, country, blues, metal. Um, there's even electronic kits in there for, for doing electronic type music. So there you have it. I hope I helped you make your decision.